welcome back. Thanks for joining us at the Gilwell Fox. Now we're going to show how to splint different types of leg fractures. So Ben here took a fall. And there may be a fracture here, maybe a fracture up in the femur, which can be very dangerous. It takes a ton of pressure to break a femur. It's the largest bone in the body, but it can happen. Let's say there's a hip injury as well, either dislocation or a fracture. So we're just going to go ahead and immobilize the whole leg. If it was just down here on the bottom, we could fracture, we could immobilize just from just above the knee on down to the foot. But we're going to show all of this and then you can pick and choose what you need to do as the need arises. Luckily, Ben had his trekking poles again. And I can size these. So that'll be one for the inside. That'll be for the outside. Now first, we're going to put our narrow cravats in place. And I will do that by taking some other stick, putting it underneath. And through that natural hollow in the knee, slip it under. And then scoot it down. So since we have the bone fracture, we're going to splint from joint to joint. We'll take our second narrow cravat. Again, under the knee. And we're going to bring that as high as we can. Oh, we got stuff in the pockets. You want to make sure Everything's out of their pockets. What else you got in there, man? Okay. We need that nice and smooth. Take our third narrow cravat. Again, put that in place at the knee. And then a fourth since we need to immobilize the hip under that natural hollow in the back slip that underneath but then pull one of the tails all the way through and that will be not doubled over so before we get started I just want to make it clear that this is one way of immobilizing a leg. There are other ways. Various organizations teach different techniques. What I'm doing right now is very basic. We would also want to, if we were out camping and we had a, a foam pad, we would want to put that around the leg. But for this video, we're just showing a very basic technique. Before we get started, I need to take the boot off because just like the hand, I need to check, I need to check that pulse. Now, if we had say a minor fracture wasn't too bad and there we may have to improvise a crutch and walk out we would consider leaving the boot on but if we have enough people in our party that we can rig up a stretcher and we can walk them out and it's not too far I'm going to take the boot off so 
take that off and yes we're gonna have to take the socks off too so again I have to check PMS I'm checking for the pulse and I can find that in two places I can find that on the inside behind the ankle bone or I can also find that right on top of the foot okay I've got pulse you have movement okay can you feel that yeah Now we'll put our splints in place. So for patient comfort, I'm gonna to wanna to wrap that. So again, I'll use my scarf. Cause that's a piece of bare metal. So that should take care of around the knee area and the ankle area. And since it's going up between the legs, I'm just going to give some added protection and put a handkerchief over there. So we want to get that right up in there. And for the outer one, again, I'll wrap that. where we might have some pressure points against the outer knee if this was long enough to go up under his arm I might pad the top too but this isn't this is just going right here we want to make sure that the splints don't go too far past the foot because if you've ever been in an ambulance a stretcher from the bottom of your foot to the ambulance door is only about a foot so if we have splints that are going way out here you might not be able to close the ambulance door so make sure they're not more than a few inches past the foot so now so I have these doubled as you may have seen in the rigid upper body arm splint that's double over I slip it through the loop this one I can wrap it around I have enough is that too tight nope great always talk to your patient I'm going to put that square knot right on the splint then I'm going to tuck those ends in to do the housekeeping this way they don't get caught on anything as we're carrying him out. Again, I'm going joint to joint. So ankle to knee. Good? Yeah, that's fine. Square knot. Suck it. Now, I use the technique where I doubled my cravat. If you're just using straight pieces of cloth and maybe they're not long enough to double over and you're just putting it under once and tying it, then I recommend the surgeon's knot as seen in the previous video. But since we're using long cravats I can double it and I'll just use the square knot as I'm slipping it through the loop it's not going to slip back now joint to joint we want to get that as far up as possible to the hip Tie our square knot, tuck that in. All our knots are right against the splint. And now to immobilize the hip. 
This way he can't sit up. Got that on there. Our square knot and tucked in. So we're padded at the hip, at the knee. And as you see, we've tied all of our cravats joint to joint to joint. This last one is up as high as we can get it. We've got one across the torso in order to prevent him from sitting up. That immobilizes the hip. And from this position, we can put him on a stretcher. We can use, if we have a group of people, we could use a hammock carry, which people grabbing arms and making a hammock out of arms and carrying them out. So that is immobilizing various leg fractures. Hope you learned something. Stay with us.